So welcome everyone to our information webinar for our Level 7 20 ECTS Certificate in Emerging Digital Technologies with the National College of Ireland and supported by Engineers Ireland. Today we're going to hear all about the programme from Victor Del Rosal, the Senior Consultant and Lecturer in Innovation and Emerging Technologies at the National College of Ireland. Also, we're delighted to have John O'Shanahan from Lean BPI, who is a graduate of our 2021 programme, and he will be joining us to speak about his personal student experience. Then myself, Gillian O'Grady, programme lead for this course with ICT Skillnet, will let you know about our funding and how to apply. After this, we will have our Q&A session, so please feel free to enter your questions during the webinar and we'll address as many as possible at this point. So I'm going to jump straight in and I'm going to stop sharing here and welcome Victor to our screens. Right, shortly. Let me know if you can see that. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Very good. So listen, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, information session for the certificate in emerging digital technologies. I'm uh, Victor Del Rosal. I'm lecturer here at National College of Ireland, Innovation Emerging Technologies, and also a co-designer of this uh, certificate, this uh, program that has two modules on the emerging digital technology side and the digital business transformation side. So we did just to give you a brief overview, half an hour uh, at most of uh, what the topics are, what it's about, who's it for, etc. And then uh, as Jillian mentioned, we'll jump into some of the previous experiences that, that were shared. So I suppose I'll start with the course content and uh, topic overview to give you a a flavor of some of the things that we see in the course and then we'll dive into explaining you know the the, the rationale and the, the the whole the theory i suppose behind the the actual program itself and the utility of it for yourself so i, I'll, I always like like start sharing and looking at some of the practical aspects that we're familiar with and in, in, um, in with these technologies whether they're emerging or they're consolidated mature technologies so one of them is an umbrella term for virtual, augmented, and mixed reality, it's called extended reality. It's one of the uh, one of the few technologies we see in this in this course. And I suppose we're familiar from you know the likes of our phones playing around with uh, things like Pokemon Go back a few years ago. Some of you might still have it in your phones. You go around you know uh, catching these virtual avatars and playing around. So again, we're familiar with uh, these types of uh, of, of tech technologies also the likes of filters and you know snapchat and you're we're playing and sharing and whether it's uh, instagram snapchat uh, you name it there we're, we're fairly familiar so even though they sound like they're very advanced and emerging they're actually you know they're they're useful for entertainment purposes uh, in the course we looked at uh, the educational side of things and for example uh, exploring virtual environments and, and, and virtual reality and also Another angle that we take and we, we like to remind ourselves is how science fiction, the likes of The Matrix, you know, one of these famous movies we're all familiar with from a, a decade or almost two decades ago. That's scary. And, you know, how they, they, they have these virtual environments more recently, Ready Player One, the book, then the, the couple movies. And, and again, the idea behind the plots of these films is that they're you know we're we're going into from the the real world into these virtual environments and interacting and exploring and learning so if you've ever read the book or watched the movie you can you can relate to how the protagonist and you know and everyone the characters in there live out their lives and, and the same thing you know for the matrix so i suppose one of the messages that we we talked about is how science fiction can shape uh, science and how these things that were impossible 10, 20 or more years ago are now coming into the realm of the you know of industry of real life. So these are some of the examples. Uh, and again, you know, we we try to have a bit of fun also in the in the sessions. We won't we don't watch movies, but <laughs> we do watch and, and just try to try to see and, and you know spot these things in, in different realms of uh, not only science fiction but reality industry, etc. So, for example, augmented reality in, a, in a, a, the fashion industry, in your the nearest uh, shop, mall, whatever. So you might use it to, uh, yeah, as a magic mirror, quote unquote, where you can test and see if the clothes might fit, how you might look in them. So there's utility, there's a practical side to all these things beyond the purely theoretical and technical aspects of it. Same goes for virtual reality and training. 
you might you might be better suited, especially you know in this post pandemic world where you don't necessarily have the resources or, or don't want people commuting long distances. You might meet in these virtual environments and, and have these sort of more complex uh, uh, models that you want to show or train for, uh, regardless of the industry. So we we look at applications around that uh, across a number of variety of industries, and uh, we'll talk to to that in a moment. So just to let you know the the components, the the technologies that are addressed. We start with cloud and data analytics, really as the baseline and the the platform, the underlying platform. So. Things, we explain things like infrastructure as service, platform as service, software as service, <clears throat> and then all the different, I suppose, components around cloud. Same goes for data analytics. Uh, uh, even though we, we don't go necessarily into data science, an in-depth look at data science, we take concepts of, of that and uh, mix with cloud and start there as the, as, as the baseline. And that is because uh, we're, I suppose, the vast majority of the solutions, 99% or more, would have some cloud component. And we explain what that means as opposed to traditional on-premises computing, and we go into that. Now, I, I suppose it's also good to say at this point that the course does not assume any previous knowledge or expertise in any given technology. So it doesn't matter what your uh, previous industry, your, your previous level of uh, tech awareness, et cetera. We do not assume that. Um, and, and I'll, I'll get to that in a moment and explain what, uh, what that means in, in practice. So also artificial intelligence, the different distinctions of it, the components, uh, we look at, uh, uh, and, and it applies to every technology, we look at introduction to each of these from the, the requ required reading, videos, et cetera, so that you can ease yourself and ease, ease the class into each of these. Same goes for blockchain, cybersecurity, Internet of Things, Advanced Robotics, Extended Reality, we just saw a taste there at the very beginning, and FinTech and Decentralized Finance as an application of a, a lot of these. So these were the ones that after we had our panel review, industry review, when coming up with this course a few years ago, almost three years ago, that made the cut and were selected for, for this uh, program. It's just, uh, you know, there's many more that could have come in in different angles. Uh, but these were, these were the ones that were approved for a five-year period. Maybe in five years, you have another batch that are, that are completely different or, uh, you know, uh, borrow from these. So I suppose a good time to uh, explain what the objectives of the program is uh, if, you're, if you're to join. So the, the objective of the of certificate is to provide you, uh, to provide students, including non-computing professionals, IT professionals, and non-traditional students or learners, with, first of all, a fundamental knowledge and understanding of the technologies that we just saw. So these emerging digital technologies that were mentioned, also a working and practical knowledge of them and their potential application. So application is a, is a key word here. So there's no point looking at the theory without, without understanding the actual practical side of things. So that's, uh, that's important in the workplace and across specialized areas of, of knowledge. So there's plenty of that uh, time to, to look at various case studies. Also, the learning skills to, uh, that support them and develop a deeper knowledge of their impact. So again, as you notice here, the, the potential impact and application is a key focus, not just not the theory. Even though it could be a very theoretical course, we chose not to make it so, so that you have a basic grasp of what the theory is, the tech is, but more importantly, what can you do with it? And then, of course, if you choose to pursue that uh, any particular path of uh, any technology, you can go and dive deeper. So uh, you get a, a, a primer or a good sense of all of these and what you might be able to do with any of them. Also very important, number four, is the ability to investigate and analyze these technologies and exercise creative and or conceptual skills. So you're planning, designing concepts, applying the technologies to your, your own project ideas, ideas for products, services, operation processes. So this is quite important and you'll see why in a moment, this ability to investigate and analyze. So I'll, we'll, we'll stress that a little bit. And also overall, uh, the ability to communicate, present, do teamwork and problem solve. So it's highly engaged in the, you know, it's not, to be honest, it's not a passive course that you can just, you know, hit the play button and, you know, sit back, I'm afraid, or, or I suppose it's a good thing 
so it's uh, it, it it does expect that level of of engagement uh, working with your peers and coming up with uh, ideas and discussing debating etc so that's part of the object objectives and this all reflected in the learning outcomes so uh, i won't go through all of these just to let you know that you know it's uh, the just uh, understanding the role of the technologies uh, discriminating assessing and analyzing their impact and then also evaluating industry agnostic approaches this on the digital business transformation size side of things to know how you can actually make change uh, at a whether it's an sme or a larger corporation and how they overall uh, relate to contemporary business practice so i suppose a fairly balanced approach uh, uh, from the theory and the practice side of things the the tech and the and the business side of things and we try to you know, uh, interest, see the intersection of those different areas. So as you would expect, the, the learning approach is flipped or in the sense that there is preparation required before class. So that is a key element of the program. And we'll, we'll see why it's called directed learning in a moment. The materials are shared in advance. So it's an intro video along with uh, reading uh, material. And then uh, live sessions, we use them to exchange ideas, collaborate, learn. So again, we do stress there is a bit of reading and, uh, you know, it might take an hour or two hours uh, a week uh, per, per module. So, you could, so it, it is intensive in that sense. So I suppose this is important to clarify uh, because some learners might expect in the you know, previous model is you do a lot of learning in the class. That's where the lecturer will teach you. But I suppose we flip that in the sense that you come in prepared, you know, reading a lot of a lot of material. And again, I stress it does not require that you have previous experience in any technology or industry, but it does require that you are uh, going through the materials and, and setting aside time to, to prepare. So it's one of the videos that, uh, you know, an example for, let's say, for session one or prior to any any of the sessions. We have a four or five, less than 10 minute uh, clip, the very short clips where the, the topics, the, the different reading materials are introduced, the, the rationale, the logic for each of them, and what you might expect after, after uh, list or reading or watching a video, for example. Uh, there's some videos that explain, for example, blockchain, you know, how, how blocks connect to each other, what mining is in the blockchain, things like that. So you get a basic understanding. And regardless, you know, you might be an expert in one of these areas. That's that's perfect. We'll address that in a moment. Even if you were an expert, how that might fit into the, the program. But uh, we try to take it for the the basics, the fundamentals first for each of the sessions. So this direct learning approach, what it's uh, the way it's uh, it's actually executed is you have that weekly introduction, that video, you have your reading materials. And then as, uh, as a way to help you, to help the brain sort of put everything together, you're asked to post a, a, in the forum five insights uh, for, for each module. So five insights for emerging digital technologies and five for digital business transformation. What do you learn in the week prior to the actual session? And now some students, uh, you know, leave it after the session. That, that's okay. You, know, you won't lose marks. And, and uh, I suppose the, the, the whole point um, is, is not really to mark anyone. It, really, it's, you know, as, a, as an adult learner, we expect a lot of, you know, uh, mature learners, I suppose, that are coming from industry. It's, it's, it goes, um, yeah, the marks you get, you do get marked, you get, a, you get a, at the end of the, the semester. But it's really just trying to get you engaged. And, and this is the, the manner that the direct learning, learning approach does it, is by asking you to post and reflect as you go, as opposed to just leaving it to the very end uh, for a project. And, and then in the class, in the sessions, there's a, of course, this new theory that's introduced and explained, but there's also class discussions and, and we, we appreciate those. And, you know, we, we highly encourage those uh, breaking up into teams, uh, breakout rooms, et cetera. And then of course, as a, as a class, so they can become very, very productive uh, discussions. So in Moodle, what you would, uh, you would expect is you have your, again, I won't dwell too much on this, but to uh, encourage students to complete posts ahead of sessions so as part of the learning approach. And uh, 
And as part of that, to explain concepts in your own words, focusing on the key concepts, I'd like to ask the so what question. So what does that mean? And it doesn't matter if you're still you know, learning uh, and, and uh, just trying to grasp some of the concepts, that's okay. There's no, there's no penalty or anything like that for not knowing. So there's none of that approach is quite the opposite. We're trying to encourage all levels to, to interact. So just, you know, try to see what your, what your own uh, understanding is, what could be the practical use of any of these technologies. And you do mention the sources, even though there's no rigorous academic referencing in these sort of polls. These are forum posts in the via Moodle. So what I'd say to you also is that a lot of the projects and, and, and the work, my approach is that it is driven by, by your own interest and curiosity. So, you know, to see what's beyond, to try to, you know, stand on the shoulders of giants that you're the, you know, the videos and experts that are out there and, you know, to learn from them as, and also from the class as a whole, we have some experts that we've been lucky with in the, the first iteration that share their own findings. And that's very useful. So I, I like that, you know, curiosity to me is, is a key element and just because you, you have a desire to, to learn about any and all of these uh, technologies. So who is this for? For, uh, what I'd say, and based on you know the design of the program, as we as we mentioned, it is for IT professionals, also for non-computing professionals, hundred percent, and any uh, anyone else that's you know non-traditional learner that may have no previous uh, experience in in any any area or degrees. That's that's perfect because you know you might be in here for as a professional aiming to pivot to a career in technology, so you're just getting started. You want to see what might be an area you could break into. Might be, it could be cybersecurity or blockchain, or you're trying to. Pivot to any of these technologies, et cetera. So it's up to you. It could be managers seeking a better grasp of the tech the landscape as a whole. So have a wide view of what's out there without any particular technology considered. Uh, so just to, you know, get a sense of what's there and what's coming. Also decision makers looking for a, a broad range of tech-based solutions. So you're actively looking for solutions to problems that you see in your industry or for your clients. So we had that. And John, for example, will tell us about that uh, later, his own experience. And it, really anyone curious about the potential of these technologies. So uh, again, if you're curious, that's a good, that's a good word. That's a good place to be. So, and then in terms of the assignments, uh, basically we call them here at NCI uh, CAs or continuous assessment as opposed to exams. So they're not, they're not exams. So these are projects really, and it is down to the participation. Uh, uh, so in class, uh, you know, uh, I suppose exercises and, and, and in class uh, discussions, I suppose also, but also your submissions and the forum posts that uh, you submit so and uh, and then it's formally there's two assignments per each of the modules and this may change by the way so in the next iteration this might be a single assignment as opposed to two separate ones uh, don't pay attention to that but it's just a project so it's project oriented uh, coursework yeah, as, along with a class participation so for example we might look at one of these assignments uh, the the context of the industry you're so you could pick fashion industry or, you know, education or training or whatever industry, or, and then you look at, so, you know, introduce the, the reader to that industry. What could be use case descriptions of two technologies for that? How does the solution work? User experience, et cetera. So we borrow some concepts from methodologies such as agile or the lean canvas, uh, or business model canvas, et cetera. So we, we use some standard frameworks for both the for both modules really and then uh, what is the value that is rendered by each of these technologies and some of the details of the architecture uh, and the components of those technologies so i suppose you know once we get to this uh, some students feel a bit overwhelmed so, well i know nothing about architecture i know nothing about components of these technologies or underlying under the hood of cloud or, or cyber security never mind so the what i say to you is no panic you know that's what you're here for you're here to learn and you're going to uh, that so that's why we said the the research all the the skills to go and investigate 
and reflect and, and you know and uncover ideas on you know what's the architecture what are what's the minimum viable architecture for for a cloud system or cybersecurity system or ai you know how do you connect things what's an api all of these things that you, you might already know easily or, but if you don't that's fine because that's part of your of your of your work here is to know and, and and discover how how you might go about it so then with all of this what what could you expect what are some of the of these benefits so as i think what, what we stress in class is that there's such a, a dynamic landscape in the in the tech world that if we go you know 10 years or 15 or 20 or whatever we might have humans on mars we don't know or we might have quantum computing that is you know easily accessible uh, nuclear fusion in the same manner that you know cloud computing back here 2015 ish was not a thing in, in 2005 or 2000 or before that so so the the future is you know it's not what everyone might expect but we do we, we don't have a crystal ball obviously right but we we can rely on what experts are saying where, where trends are going and hopefully have a have a, a year or two you know, in advance to, to prepare or, you know, to go into those industries as a practitioner, decision maker, pivot into those careers, as we mentioned. So that's one of the, uh, to keep an eye on these maturing technologies and see how we could uh, get into them and work with them. So we analyze the likes of uh, the Gardner hype cycles and, you know, a number of analysts and other, and you come across. So we like to uh, present uh, McKinsey, or Deloitte and all these different analysts and you know they, they mostly get it right so they're they have a good eye for what's coming so that that's also that that the, the foresight of things as and along with the the uh, the practical so things you can learn today things that are skills that are marketable today not not in five years so those two things are are, are useful those two two benefits and then the, the the whole idea, the whole integration of, of everything. So we have the, the technology side of things, the ICT, scientific, all the all your your the hard hard skills, the, the quote unquote. But then the soft skills that are not so soft anymore, they're very valuable. So again, things like curiosity here, and uh, we saw critical thinking problems. So we stress this a lot that it's everything combined. It's not just the the tech expertise, but the whole package which uh, helps uh, helps us become lifelong learners and also be more valuable up to the value in industry so that that's i suppose the, the the benefits and the expectations so what i'd say to you in terms of other expectations is that attendance is required uh, and, and the reason is that you want to be able to participate you want to be able to collaborate with your peers but also complete assignments uh, some you know tiny portions of it during sessions that do help you in your journey and the i also stress the prep before class it is central it does help a lot and you know things as i mentioned before and so these are some of the expectations so the, the, you know the, there is a bit of hard work so if, if you're expecting it's a course you can just watch and play uh, i suppose passively with some courses allowed that's fine you know another other parts other parts of the internet <laughs> Um, but here you, there, there is that expect, expectation to, to be engaged, even though it is, it is hundred percent online course. So, uh, for the evenings, so that, that's the only major thing that I expect. And then of course, John uh, might comment on other, some of these notes and, and you might have other questions yourselves. I'd, I'd like to close just a couple more, a uh, couple more slides, uh, things that we've seen in the past from students across uh, NCI is that uh, they also see the, the potential of technology for good and to solve real world problems. So some of the students uh, got into some hackathons as part of our the, the modules and, and then they went on to fundraise, uh, is my understanding, some of them going to incubators and, and whatnot. But I suppose, and, and for example, like Sam, he saw the value of this, of, uh, of this engagement in the class. And he shared with me a story that when he was interviewed at the time it was Verizon, I'm not sure if he's still there. And he became a software engineer and that interview hinged a lot of it. I don't know what percentage, but a good portion of it on his, on his uh, time in, in school doing these sort of things, these sort of, um, uh, you know, innovation and application of technology in case, in his case for, for social good, 
is a project there. So it, that's why that uh, that engagement is very useful because it transcends the uh, the uh, the academic and it goes over and it should help your your professional life. And same goes for another student. We had Deveshi. She became a technology analyst at City, and that was a, a, a direct a result of a hackathon also uh, here at NCI. Uh, so City immediately hired her after that. So she they actually that team won first place national competition competition, and they went on to uh, and she went on to become employed in in, in this case in City. I suppose you know, and I should mention also, uh, NCI is, is notorious for their career programs in a good way, <laughs> very, very, very famous, I should say, for uh, in, in award winning in, in terms of the uh, industry engagement, and uh, and um, you know just the level of uh, of engagement in terms of getting jobs and securing, I suppose, interviews and managing that whole process. So after the program. It's a very good uh, connection there with the with the pipeline of potential jobs, uh, and again, the, the careers team is is there to help. They're very good at at that. So the, the last thing I'd say is just you know one of the things that we shared at the very end of the, of the course is to, is uh, as a result of it, I would also also expect learners and students to if they would pick a learning path, one of the technologies or a number of these that would interest you most. Then you keep learning, you break it up into bite-sized chunks and keep learning despite uh, steep, uh, or steep uh, learning curves. And then as I said to you, uh, put the, the, the knowledge to you. So keep going with uh, project-based approaches and use case approaches, either academic or for industry purposes in your own job, whatever role or a new role, et cetera, and to get help, you know, so whether it's uh, mentors, other learning communities, or as I mentioned, NCI, you know the career team, etc. Building your portfolio, uh, keep uh, continue to get certified, and as I said, staying curious and enjoying the process. So that's the approach we follow for for this program. Thanks, uh, thank you very much for for your time, and uh, I'll give it back to Jillian. Thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Victor. That was amazing. Uh, great detail there, and it'll surely help uh, the future students understand the program and their next steps. So next up, I am delighted to welcome John O'Shanahan, a graduate from the 2021 program. You're very welcome, John, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Gillian. Great to be here. <laughs> thanks, John. So, John, how was your overall experience of the course and what made you decide to do it? Um, overall, the, the experience was very positive. Um, why did I decide to do it? I'm a business improvement consultant. Um, I have my own company for the last eight years. And I suppose, look, I have seen I'm using tools and technologies today that weren't there eight years ago. And if I'm honest, I wouldn't have been the first to be using all the emerging technologies looking backwards. So I suppose I recognize that, you know, I'd like to be more current in terms of looking forward. So it's a competitive advantage for me personally, professionally, to, to, I suppose, to buy into what's coming and to keep an eye on that and to be more knowledgeable. So, you know, looking, looking before I was a consultant, um, my background was in computer disks. So I started with floppy disks and, and the cloud put us out of business. But I saw that transition from, you know, floppy disks through to CDs, through to DVDs. When I got out, they were looking at Blu-ray. It never made it really. To, to fruition because of the cloud. So what what I have seen and learned, I suppose, in my career is that technology is coming faster and we don't know which ones will stick or which ones will apply to to every business, but we do know that many of them will. So that was what motivated me to to get involved in the course. Fantastic, absolutely. And, and what about, just you kind of, just when you mentioned yourself there, how um, did you manage to balance your the work-life situation while you're taking the course? Um, yeah, what, what I did was um, I allocated time each week for the coursework. So I kind of had a slot. Personally, for me, it was Sunday mornings. I just did my, my coursework on Sunday mornings. Um, I found that worked for me. You know, other students did it at different times, but I found that that was what, what worked, to have a slot and to stick to that. You know, there is, there is if you don't do the reading, you kind of miss the content. You know, so you have to, you have to put some time in. So um, yeah, I allocated time for that and, and I found that worked well for me. 
Brilliant. You know, I think that's uh, very important about any course. It's just sitting down and setting, working out when is a good time for you and putting that aside. Definitely agree with you on that, John. Um, so just when you mentioned your organization as well, uh, can you give us an example of how it benefited you or the organization? Yeah, so, um, you know, since I suppose we, we, we did quite a bit of work around emerging digital technologies and there was an element around digital transformation. So that whole area, we've, I suppose we've come to specialize in that over the last year, probably. Um, and on the back of doing the course, I, I did um, some research work with, a, with um, an overseas university on digitalization in Irish micro business. And I suppose the course, I suppose, prompted me to kind of keep learning. So, you know, you do something and you see where it takes you. So from that side, it's, it's raised our profile. Um, we've got some nice research material out there. And yeah, it's, it's something that we can build on going forward. Um, I suppose second to that, you know, there are training programs up for tender across the country. And one of the questions on the tender application is what training do you have around, you know, digital technology? So, you know, I, I nicely tick that box. It wasn't a reason I signed up for the course, but, it, you know, it was a nice thing to have that we've, we've done some formal training or I've done some formal training. And um, yeah, so that was really useful as well, I suppose, that you don't know where it'll bring you. It's a bit like Victor said, you don't know what the benefits will be. But what you do know is that emerging digital technologies are coming and it's not going to be a bad thing to to see what's coming and to um, keep your eye out and see where you can apply that in your business or in your life. Fantastic. Yeah, I suppose it's like Victor said, the lifelong learning journey. Um, it gets you started on that as well. So, um, well, from what you've said, I think I know the answer to my next question. But for the event that's in it, I will ask, would you recommend the program and why, John? Yeah, I would recommend the program. And I suppose the reason I'd recommend it is um, if you look at, say, Victor touched on this in terms of looking backwards, we, we tend to kind of second guess technology. But when we look at technology where we're at today, it's always gone further than, than we think. So I think for that reason, like that curiosity and getting involved and, you know, there's loads of reasons not to do it but you don't know where it'll bring you. And I think to utilize digital technologies in business, in your life, you've got to be curious and willing to, to try things. So for that reason, I think it's good for people to, to kind of get out of the comfort zone and see what happens. So I'd recommend it for that reason, yeah. Fantastic. John, you have been absolutely great. And thanks so much again for joining us today. Um, don't forget, if anyone has any questions for John as well, pop them in the Q&A in the bottom and we'll get back to them at the end. So I'm just gonna share my screen here quickly. Thanks, Philip. Thanks very much, John. Now. <clears throat> now, just before the q and I want to give you a bit of background on ICT Skillnet and how to apply for the course. So Technology Ireland ICT Skillnet is co-funded by Skillnet Ireland and network companies. Skillnet Ireland is funded from the National Training Fund through the Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science. To be eligible for the part funded fees, students need to be working in a private or commercial semi-state organisation registered in the Republic of Ireland. Additionally, students should currently hold a minimum of an NFQ level six qualification to gain entry, or applicants may be considered based on relevant work or other experiences. This will be through the NCI recognition of prior experiential learning scheme. So please contact me directly for those details. Uh, to apply, submit your CV on www.ictskillnet.ie or you can email info at ictskillnet.ie with your employment and educational details. So I had a couple of questions come in there. So um, I've worked in an organisation for 20 years, but I have a little tech experience and I find myself at a loss in meetings over the last few years when new technology is being discussed. Is there anything I should be doing in advance of the course or would I be able to pick it up as I go? Um, maybe Victor, if you'd like to take that yeah, one. Yeah, no, that, that's great. Thanks for that question. Uh, again, it, there's no assumption of, of previous uh, knowledge, so you can know very, very little. So, however, as John pointed out, you do need to uh, make the time, you know, for 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 reading. So, uh, two hours uh, per per module, ideally for for every week. So that that'd be up to four hours a week for for the two modules. Sometimes it might be less; it might be an hour each. But once you do that, you know, you follow the, the, the instructions and the, and the program contents and you should be fine. So there'd be no, no, no panic there. It can definitely doable. Brilliant, Victor. Thanks very much for taking that. 
Um, we still have another question there. Will there be a lot of coding or just theoretical? No coding uh, at all. So there's, I suppose, you know, some, some students might, if they, if they do have a coding background, their project could reflect that, but it, it, it ha everyone would be marked with the same, same uh, structure. So it would not uh, give you, I suppose, an advantage over others in that sense, but so there's no, no coding requirement. And I suppose from the, you know, if you had some JavaScript, Python or anything, it might help you understand the, some of the data science concept, but it will make no, make no impact for, for the class. And we, to my recollection, John, we did not see any coding in, in the, in the sessions. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so another one there, I previously started online courses and struggled to keep momentum as they were purely video with no direct tutor interaction. How interactive is in the course is the course and or engagement? So I think probably John or Victory, either of you could take that one. John, you go ahead, John. Uh, sorry, um, Gillian, could you repeat that? The line kind of broke up there as you were speaking. No problem. Uh, I previously started an online course and struggled to keep momentum as they were purely video and no direct tutor interaction. How interactive is the course and or engagement? I found it very interactive. There was a couple of uh, things that were that, that I enjoyed. One was that the content was very current. So, you know, that's always nice when I, it needs to be for this type of program, but it was really good, Victor, like you'd um, interesting content videos were short and engaging and I found that it, it came together well in terms of like the video the content that kept you engaged so um, yeah I thought it was it was strong in that regard and, and if I may I'd say the other thing in, in, and John might correct me if I'm wrong but what what I strive really is for a lot of guidance for for learners so if there is any questions after the sessions and the tutorial component of every every week, there was, you know, half an hour, an hour allowed for any queries, so you you would not be left on your own. So you definitely, you know, you go through, we go through the class together. You have your previous learning, but there's also that component of of helping you with any particular questions you might have on a weekly basis, for sure. Yeah, I I thought it worked well. You you called it the flipped learning, Victor. Where um, it did, it was a little bit um, unusual, I suppose, in the beginning that you know you do the reading and then you go through the material and you realize like if you don't do the material beforehand you're going to be kind of left behind so i, I found that worked really well i i thought it was a it was a good way to get the information across brilliant thanks very much for that john victor so we have another question in there say hi my area of interest is ed tech in the k-12 sector will you be touching on this area and trends here I mean, we don't go ex explicitly into any particular areas. Uh, however, what I do encourage is if you have any industry, you can import that into the course. And, you know, by all means, when I spot any any student that uh, is, you know, very avid, you know, they want to apply emerging technologies for an, an ed tech or they want to apply it in construction or, you know, psychology. So I, I love that actually, which is the, the mix of the emerging technologies with another uh, a vertical. So that's that's encouraged, but uh, then I would say, you know, we don't have a specific content that we go and, and look at that tech necessarily. That, that'd be up to each student to pursue their own interests. Brilliant, thank you very much, Victor. Um, another just a quick one, is there any requirement to attend the college at any point during the course? Not that I know of, and it's it's advertised as a purely and it still has an online only uh, program. Now, some some people might want to actually have the the in person component, but that'd be up to the students or you know talk to program coordinator if you want to arrange something in person. But my understanding, it's it's hundred percent online. Perfect. Thank you very much, Victor. So um, I just have one more question there. I'm just being conscious of time here now. Uh, what programs or platforms are used during the course? So I know you mentioned Moodle, Victor. Um, is there any other kind of platforms or software required? Uh, just Teams. Uh, so Microsoft Teams and Moodle. And, and that is it. Now, there, there, there might be a slight learning curve, especially if you, you know if someone's been out of education for, for a while in terms of Moodle, doing some, some of the things and navigating. So for that, we do have uh, some learning experts and specialists that come in early in the course and try to try to help you with that. So if there's anything you know that you're still unfamiliar with, you can raise a ticket. We can ask have specialists come in even during sessions and just give us you know quick overview of things. But yeah, by all means, do raise any 
any concerns early on. Perfect. Thank you very much, Victor. So I see a couple of questions there, but I will actually respond to you directly um, after the webinar myself. Um, I'd like to thank Victor and John for joining us on the webinar today. Thank you both. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, obviously, um, in ICT Skillner for helping host today's event and to each of you for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate your attendance and we hope to see you all on the next course. Thank you all and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.